Hey folks, this is Kalani. The raiding scene of World of Warcraft has gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, yet it still remains one of the most entertaining forms of content while actually playing the game. It's one of the reasons why players come flocking back to Azeroth time and time again after taking their little breaks. No one ever really quits. New expansions and new raids will always bring players back. Delving deep into underground caverns, long lost structures, or just trampling through a large monster's nest. We do it all in the name of loot, honor, and glory. Now the loot part is pretty self-explanatory. We want new and shiny gear so we can bash in the next boss's head to get even more new and shiny gear. And so the age-old tale of the gear treadmill continues, but the honor and glory part isn't what it once was. There's a few interesting changes coming in Battle for Azeroth which will most likely change what it means to raid at the cutting edge of progression, and what kind of glory will be bestowed upon you for being one of the first players to take down a specific boss or complete a specific raid. But first, let's talk about what raiding used to be like. Back in the days of vanilla, it was almost prestigious to just be talking about raiding the Molten Core. Raids weren't for everyone. Only the dedicated groups of 40 players delved into the hardest dungeons in the game. Their loot was testament enough of their prowess. They didn't need any fancy achievements. We'll ignore the part where achievements weren't even in the game at that point, but my point is, if you saw a Molten Core Raider, you knew, just by looking at them, that they had way too much time on their hands and were pretty decent at the game. But the raids themselves acted as tiers of awesomeness. Getting through Molten Core was leagues away from getting through Next Ramus. Having the gear, and in some cases the legendaries, was incredibly prestigious, but there was a significant flaw with the raids during those times. It was notoriously difficult and time-consuming to get your to the point of being able to hop into Naxxramas, so almost no one saw the content. That carried through, for the most part, into the Burning Crusade, where you had to work your way through each raid to be able to continue on to the next, even if you were nearing the end of the expansion. There are a few catch-up mechanics introduced towards the end with the Shattered Sun Offensive, but nothing quite like what we have today. The loot that you had was still singing of your accomplishments. It wasn't until Wrath of the Lich King that raiding really opened up to more players. Part of that may have been the difficulty being a little lower, so there's a lower barrier for entry, catch-up mechanics were introduced which allowed you to skip over raid tier for the first time, and more people were playing the game than ever before. But with more access to the raids came less prestige for working your way through them. Except the achievement system was also introduced in Wrath of the Lich King, and along with it came realm first achievements. Those achievements were awarded to the first players on each realm to kill the last boss of the raid tier. So Kalfazad, Yogg-Saron, you get the idea. This started us down the path which led us to where we are today. I'd say we've got the best of both worlds for the most part. Almost anyone can hop into raids if they wish to do so, but there's also a huge amount of prestige for carrying the realm first achievements achievements. Except there's a few problems with the Realm First achievements. Right now they don't actually award anything you can display. No title, transmog, pets, mounts, nothing. At least there were titles for Realm First in the past. Another problem is that Realm First doesn't actually mean anything significant unless you're on a competitive server. Being second, third or fourth within a few weeks of the raid's release doesn't actually mean anything, but being first on a dead server a few months later still gets you Realm First. So I can understand why Blizzard would want to remove Realm First achievements, and that's exactly what they're doing going into Battle for Azeroth. Instead of Realm First achievements, we'll have the Hall of Fame achievements, which work in a similar way, but will hopefully end up being much better overall. The Hall of Fame achievements are awarded to the first 100 guilds on Horde and Alliance who kill the last boss in the raid tier. So the first one we have a preview for is the Hall of Fame Gahoon. This is obviously awarded for killing Gahoon on Mythic difficulty. When you earn this achievement, you will also receive the title Famed Slayer of Gahoon. So there's a title on the line which is limited to 200 guilds total, and I would expect that to be the case for every raid tier in Battle for Azeroth. So the prestige for being one of the first players or guilds to take down a boss is returning in the form of these titles, which is pretty exciting to see. Even though I probably wouldn't find myself in a position to claim one of them in Battle for Azeroth, I like the idea of unique titles for each tier of raiding. Perhaps even better is that these achievements won't be tied down to your realm. It's the first 100 guilds on each faction to claim victory in the raids. That means it doesn't really matter what server you're on. Sure, you might not get realm first or second, but if you're within the first 100 for your entire faction, you'll still receive the same rewards. I would be interested to see how this might affect the competition at the start of the raiding tiers. Players who might not have pushed themselves as hard might step up to the challenge if they're competing for 100 spots instead of just one. 
and at least players on the same realm as the best skills in the world now have a chance to claim a few prizes of their own. Coming second to Method all the time must be really frustrating, but now there's a title up for grabs. These achievements are also on a per-faction basis, which can have some interesting implications. Firstly, you don't have to worry about faction balance, or one faction having an unfair advantage from things like racial abilities. Both factions are competing on their own leaderboard. Each has 100 rewards to give out. So, if you're playing Alliance and the Horde are just all around better, it doesn't actually matter when it comes to these achievements. You're competing on a level playing field because the chaps you're racing against are all Alliance too. This isn't too surprising, the PvP rewards were actually changed to work the exact same way going into Legion. Instead of the top players from the entire game being showered with PvP rewards, it's now faction specific, so the best players from Horde and the best players from Alliance get rewards. I wonder if guilds would consider switching factions if it meant that they were able to get one of these Hall of Fame achievements a little easier. In Antorus the Burning Throne, 70% of the Mythic Argus kills are by Horde guilds. That means 30% of the kills were by Alliance guilds. If those numbers don't change significantly going into Battle for Azeroth, some guilds might make the swap for future tiers if they don't quite manage to squeeze into the top 100 Horde guilds. Imagine seeing Horde tick over to the 100 cap, with Alliance still having a lot of spots left. It might just look too tempting for some players, which could work to balance the factions in the future. It could be a pretty huge undertaking to swap your entire guild's faction just for an achievement, but some players on the cutting edge of progression do some crazy things for any advantage they can get. Now, this would end up hurting those players who are managing to cash in on realm-first achievements on the lower population realms. If they weren't making it into the top 100 for their faction before, they might not be able to do it now. If they are playing on that low population realm because they have no competition when it comes to claiming those realm-first kills, they might end up losing their only reason to actually stay there. You could ask the question of whether they actually deserve the achievement and prestige if they were months behind the rest of the realm-first kills, but I guess realm-first is still realm-first. If those guilds can't compete for the Hall of Fame achievements, then they would either have to up their game to try and challenge some of the top 100 guilds, or could just still progress at their current level. I think it's a good thing in the long run that you can't cheese the rewards or achievements by moving to a low population realm for the sole purpose of farming realm first kills. Of course that could end up hurting low population realms because there's now even less purpose or reason to play there, but it might actually have the opposite effect. It seems like Blizzard is moving further and further away from realm restrictions. Things aren't just about your server anymore. You probably weren't playing on your home server for a significant chunk of Legion thanks to the sharding technology. Queues to enter the max population servers have been more or less demolished, even when Legion was first launched. Going into Battle for Azeroth, you're going to be on different shards yet again if you decide to play with a new PvP mode enabled or disabled. Your server PvP flag your server PvP flag doesn't matter at all anymore. PvE or PvE, you're going into the world based on your war mode decision rather than your server choice, and now your realm doesn't mean anything when it comes to killing the raid bosses first. No matter what realm you're on, the top 100 guilds will receive those rewards. So I wonder how far this could go. Could we see mythic raids being cross-realm right away? Is there any real reason to keep a lock on that if the most important achievements are now spread across the entire faction? BFA also introduces the community system, which is sort of like guild outside of your guild. It's not restricted by your realm or server, and you can be a part of several instead of just one guild. You can use them to create raiding groups of capable players, PvP groups for the same reason, role-playing groups, anything you want. Maybe we'll see some communities taking to the stage and competing together instead of everyone being in the same guild. Eventually, we might actually end up with a fully-fledged mega server. We're practically already there. The only super important system that works on a server basis is the auction house, and there's rumors floating around that we might see some significant changes to that going forward forward. The mobile auction house was retired recently, which could be a sign of wonderful things to come. Imagine if you only had to worry about your faction instead of your server or battle group. Anyone on the same faction can group up for any activity, or god forbid even freely trade items without having to worry about restrictions. It might just be a little dream, it could end up horribly, but that might be Blizzard's end goal. And if you're on a low population server, when servers don't matter, maybe you're not on a low population server at all. Another question I'd have to ask is about the rewards for these achievements. Should they be limited to just titles? Would it be too much to give those top 100 guilds of each faction some cool unique mounts? pets, toys, or maybe even transmog opportunities. The sword from Agrimar and the scythe from Argus stick out in my mind as two amazing weapon transmogs that could have been utilised as prestigious rewards. 
creating something exclusive could increase the number of people wanting to get in on the action. It could drive the future of PvE, raiding and the world first races. When there's an awesome reward, people will flock to it. But on the flip side, 200 guilds really isn't a lot of people when compared to everyone who might want to raid. Something as cool as Teshalak or the Scythe of Argus probably should be available for everyone. So where do you draw the line? Something has to be cool and unique if you want people to strive for it, yet it can't be too awesome or the majority who don't have access to it would feel cheated. A title's the only thing that could work. Where would you draw the line on that one? I would be really interested to hear your thoughts. Titles, mounts, transmog, what could work as a reward for these Hall of Fame achievements, and what would be too much? I've probably rambled on a bit too long for this topic, I just think it's a fantastic idea to bring some meaningful rewards into the raiding scene. It's been too long and things are starting to feel a little stagnant. But that's it for this video. No more realm firsts. The top 100 guilds from both Horde and Alliance will instead be our coveted heroes and will earn their place in the Hall of Fame. Do you think these achievements are an improvement over realm firsts? Would this kind of achievement encourage and motivate you to push for a top 100 guild? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. I'd like to say a big thank you to our supporters over on Patreon. Your kindness has allowed our channel to level up and upgrade to a fancier microphone. If you want to join the names at the end of the video, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe but apart from that thanks for watching folks good luck and have fun and as always i will see you next time